Hey Grokites, today we're gonna grok Purim. What's Purim, you say? Well, if I told you that Jews had their own Halloween of sorts, would you believe me? If I told you that on this day, we are actually commanded to get drunk, would you believe me? If I told you that men are encouraged to dress up like women, would you believe me? And if I told you that it's a religious holiday, but the book that we read on this holiday doesn't even mention God's name once, would you believe me? And what if I told you that the entire holiday rests on the bravery of a Persian queen who is Jewish, but she has to hide it because nobody likes the Jews, they hate the Jews, and then she has to reveal it, and OMG, she ends up saving the Jewish people. Would you believe me? or would your brain explode? Well, I hope not, because all of that is true. So what do Jews actually commemorate on Purim? Well, the story goes a little something like this. It all began when the queen of Iran, Queen Vashti, refused to dance naked for her husband when he summoned her. So the king, whose name is impossibly Ahasuerus, kicks Vashti out and does a kingdom-wide America's Got Talent-esque search for a new queen. When all is said and done, a new queen is chosen and her name is Esther. But her name in Hebrew is actually Hadassah, like the willow tree. See, she's Jewish, but she can't tell anyone. Shh, it's a secret because everyone hates the Jews. Everything is going fine and Esther is totally slaying it as a regal. Until the king has this creepy evil advisor and his name is Haman. Boom! And Haman is plotting to kill the Jews. Like he actually says, I'm gonna kill the Jews. Esther's uncle's name is Mordechai, and he's a really stand-up guy. But he overhears Haman's plot, and he tells his niece Esther about it. Together, they realize they have to take action. Because, you know, maybe she was placed in this power position to save all of the Jews. That's totally a thing, right? Right. So Esther comes up with this brilliant and brave plan. She invites her husband, and Haman, to a set of banquets. Haman thinks he's just there for a lit party, but at the second of these banquets, in a moment of supreme total awesomeness, Esther says, Honey, Haman wants to kill all the Jews. And he's like, What? I had no idea. And she's like, Honey, I'm a Jew. And then he's like, What? And she's all, I know, right? Anyway, we can talk about that later. Right now, please hang Haman and all his sons. And so, just when all seemed lost, the entire Jewish people was saved. So, that's Purim. And so, to commemorate this miraculous story and to honor Esther's awesomeness, we celebrate every year. We donate money to charity and we give little food gifts to our friends in order to spread the love. And yes, we are supposed to get intoxicated if you are of legal drinking age, of course. Why do we get drunk? It's so that we can't tell the difference between heroes and villains. It's to emphasize the topsy-turvy nature of this holiday and a life. In a second, life can change. Esther was not queen, then she was. The Jews were safe, and then they weren't. The Jews were threatened, and then they were redeemed. Purim is super fun, super meaningful, and super empowering. It celebrates the power we all have inside of us to be courageous, to be heroic, and to be the deliverers of, of truth and salvation. Oh, also, it wouldn't be a Jewish holiday without a ritual food. The ritual food of Purim are these tasty triangle-shaped cookies called hamantaschen, which means Haman's pockets. No one really knows why. And in Israel, they're called Haman's ears, which is super weird, but it does doesn't really matter because they're delicious. Being Jewish is so much fun, but it is especially fun at Purim time. Purim, Purim. Happy Purim! Mm -hmm. Oh, and also, guess what I'm doing right now? I'm looking up my favorite hamantaschen recipe. As I mentioned, that's the cookie we eat on Purim. To get my recipe, go to groknation.com and you can make your very own hamantaschen. Yay!